straight into another guest, a uh, friend of the show, Catherine Back, now sport journalist, uh, to talk about, I think, West Ham women. It's a historic game at the weekend, uh, although it didn't really go to plan at Old Trafford against Man United. Uh, Catherine, before we get on to West Ham, um, firstly, thanks for joining us. Um, I wanted to ask you about Rebecca Welch. She's, today it's been announced that um, first female referee to be appointed to an EFL match. Uh, I know it's not women's football related or um, West Ham women related, but it's kind of a, a huge step towards sort of women, women in sport. And it's a huge, huge decision to, to give a female referee uh, a men's football match to, 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 to sort of um, to officiate. I was just wondering sort of what are your thoughts on that? Um, see, given that you know, this, it's a monumental decision uh it's one that we've been kind of waiting for um and kind of expecting for a while now but um it kind of caught a few people off guard i think yeah well it's, it's obviously really positive um I've, she's refereed quite a few games in in the women's super league and i think she did the fa cup final uh in november um so i, I mean yeah it's, it's just great to see i mean it shows that there's a pathway for for female referees that are looking to get into the game I think she says she only started she only started out eleven years ago as well, so um, she's done pretty well to to get to that level in in that short space of time, and hopefully she can sort of work her way through the divisions. And um, I saw she was saying as well that you know maybe ten to fifteen years, maybe even sooner, we might see um, a female referee in in the Premier League, um, if certainly not the Championship. I think a, a few years ago, maybe I think two thousand and ten. There was um, a female referee who briefly had to step in for for um, for the main referee um, who'd got injured. So I think she did 15 minutes um, back in 2010. But obviously, Rebecca's the first one to actually be appointed for for a football league game. Um, and hopefully, she does well. And and hopefully, it sort of you know we see more women come into refereeing and and hopefully progress throughout the divisions. Do you think that before we move on to West Ham women, do you think that this is this is kind of we're beginning to see the the beginning of I mean it might be soon, too soon to say to say the end unfortunately the beginning of you know uh, sort of the stigma around sort of sexism in football and obviously the sort of inclusion uh, and that you know it should the, the women's game and the men's game you know, aren't too dissimilar uh, and you know I've looked at the replies under the, the Sky Sports tweet announcing the you know the decision. Um, for Rebecca's sort of taking that game and it was almost predictable, um, which is quite quite sad, really. Uh, but do you think we're beginning to see, you know, the beginning of, you know, far more positive change and a more positive outlook amongst fans in general rather than sort of just, you know, just, just male fans? Um, hopefully. I mean, you know, there's, she's been appointed on merit. Um, you yeah. know, I think it, as they announced, I think it was Mike Riley, the referee's chief, had been assessing her performances and ultimately she wouldn't have got the gig if, if she wasn't ready and hadn't, hadn't done well enough um, to get it. But you're always going to get people, unfortunately, that say it's it's a tick box exercise, as they say with, with a lot of stuff with, with women's sport coverage in general. Um, like you say, I mean, the, while the standards in football between men and women are different, the rules are the same. So yeah. it, when it comes down to officiating, we've seen Sean Massey in the Premier League and, and I think she's one of the best assistant referees, regardless of gender in, in the top flight. You, you rarely see her uh, get stuff wrong. And I think, um, I remember something earlier in the season, I think it was Leicester Chelsea and she gave an offside and it was really, really close, but she got the decision right. Totally we didn't right. need to use VAR. Um yeah. And I think she's obviously one of the, the role models for, for female officials. But unfortunately, yeah, you are always going to get um, these types of, of stereotypical comments coming through. And, and I'm sure she's probably prepared for, for that as well. Um, referees get a lot of abuse in general. So um, unfortunately for, for women in sport, it's always associated with gender. If she makes a mistake, it'll be she's made a mistake because she's a woman, not because, you know, she, she was because of like, human. kind of play yeah. or whatever. Yeah, she, you, you know, yeah. it's because she's a woman. But hopefully, um, like I say, hopefully she does well. And, um, yeah, I'm, I'm sure she'll be prepared with thick skin as, as most referees are. Yeah, no, I completely agree. Definitely be be keeping an eye for, for Harrogate Town versus Port Vale. I don't think we've ever ever said that in our lifetime, unless you're a Harrogate or Port Vale fan, but definitely going to keep a close eye on that. And, you know, all the best to to Rebecca for, for that game at the weekend but moving on to West Ham women um, much of the same really it's it's been 
been a long, tough, hard season for 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 for, for the West Ham women's team. But historic game at the weekend, obviously the first West Ham uh, first women's game to be held at Old Trafford. The the outcome was kind of predictable. Uh, goals from Lauren James and, and Kristen Press for for Man United sealed a two 0 win. Uh, it leaves West Ham bo- bottom of the league still, um, and a real although it's only a point between themselves and Aston Villa, it's a real mountain to climb. Um, given the some of the fixtures they got left, although it is still in their hands. But uh, how did how did the game go at the weekend? I mean, I, I haven't been able to see it, but I wasn't been able to watch it the weekend. But I think a lot of fans were perhaps expecting a, a bigger defeat to, to just two 0 given the form that the, both both sides are in. So um, I mean, was it uh, are there signs there that Oddy Harder's team are beginning to find some kind of um, confidence and form? First half, they were good, um, but Man United weren't very good. So um, you can say that's down to West Ham limiting their chances. I think United only managed one shot on target in the first half, and that was just a straightforward long, long-range long shot, which um, didn't didn't cause Courtney Brosnan any, any problems. Um, and Man United hadn't been in the best of form going into the game. They'd, they'd only won one from four, um, so they really needed to win. And I think they were maybe a little bit nervous playing at Old Trafford and, and they were sort of below par um, in the first half. But but West Ham played well. They, they defended well. They stuck to the game plan. And then the most frustrating thing, straight after half time, concede from a set piece. It was just sort of um, undoes all the hard work and then puts you up against it straight away. And um, obviously they then conceded a second not long after, I think, if they'd held on for at one nil for a little bit, they maybe could have then sort of thrown, you know, thrown bodies forward 75 minutes um, into the game. But once you go two nil down, it's always a, a mountain to climb, especially when the team aren't scoring many goals as it is. And then obviously went down to 10 players um, just before the end as well, which didn't help. But um, it, yeah, it's, it's a tough period for them. Um, I think the, the positive thing is, not many teams at the bottom are picking up three points at the minute. You saw Bristol obviously go ahead against Birmingham um, on Sunday, but but let the lead slip, which is something they do quite a lot. Um, but Bristol have a goal scorer, uh, whereas I'm not sure West Ham do at the minute. Catherine, in the next five games, West Ham have Reading and then we play Aston Villa twice with the side directly above us. As much as that is a good thing, does it not put extra pressure on the game? Because if Villa were to pick up a point or were, were to get a win, then then it's sort of unassailable for us. At a certain, what type of pressure and how do you think that Ollie Harder and the girls will actually deal with this, considering they still yet to get that win under Ollie? So what do you make of their running? Do you, do you make us favourites to, to get the job done because it is in our hands or, or do you think it could actually play against us and we might be giving Villa points in the long run? Well, I think um, I think firstly it's good that you've got to play Aston Villa twice. Um, as as well, obviously Aston Villa in the first season in in the top flight, whereas West Ham have had a few years there. They've got some experienced players in the squad, which which hopefully will play into their hands. Um, Aston Villa have been doing a little bit better in terms of they've they've picked up, you know, a few more wins here and there, but they're still they're, they're, at last few games. Obviously, I think they've they've lost quite comfortably. So uh, they're a bit of a funny team, Aston Villa. You're never quite sure what what you're going to get from them. Um, it's it's going to be tricky. I think I think it's going to go down possibly to the last few games. And I, I remember saying I think last time I was on for, for West Ham, you do not want to be going into the last day of the season needing to get a win or or, or a point because obviously it's Manchester City. And unless un, unless their title hopes have already gone, if they've if they lose to Chelsea or if they only draw, um, and maybe the they've got all the stuff coming up there where they maybe take the foot off the gas in the final game but even so they've got they've got quality kind of throughout and you probably wouldn't fancy um West Ham's chances of of getting much on the final day so you need to kind of be going into that game not bottom and um hoping sort of maybe the other teams around you drop points as well but that, like I say those two games against Aston Villa are going to be crucial and I think the important thing is to make sure you don't lose the first one because that, that gives Aston Villa confidence. If you can just make sure you at least draw, but I think realistically you've got you've got to be going in to get three points from that one. Yeah, I think uh, before those two those two big Villa games, um, obviously Reading this weekend, and uh, in between those games is Everton a uh, tough a tough game against Everton. But the Reading one this weekend, uh, Reading kind of struggling for form a little bit, only one win in the last five. 
Um, that one stands out for me as as probably more must win than it should do, given the fact that there's two Villa games to come. I mean, how how big is Saturday's game against Reading? Again, Reading, another team where you're not quite sure what you're going to get from them. One week they beat Manchester United uh, 2-0 and the next they lose to Bristol and um, then, then, you know, they, they, they drop points again. So they're, they're, a, they're a funny team. They, they held Manchester City to, to 0-0 until the 87th minute at the weekend and it, and it took a bit of brilliance from Lauren Hemp to, to create a goal for, for Chloe Kelly. So they are a hard team to beat, but um, I think that game probably suited them in a style of they probably set up to defend was I'm not sh- quite sure what their game plan will be with West Ham, whether they'll kind of take the game to you and uh, you know, whether, whether you'll kind of set up to, to sort of frustrate them and maybe look to, to get a goal on the break or, or whether, you know, Reading will kind of, you know, let, let West Ham dictate the play. It, you know, I'm not quite sure how it'll go, but I think, yeah, you see how Bristol beat beat Reading. I think you're looking at that game and thinking it's it's definitely one you need to take points from. But it's it's a big chance to get the first win under Ollie Harder. And once once you do that, once you get the first win, the the confidence will will definitely go up. Catherine, is there extra importance and expectation now with the whole TV deal, which is monumental, brilliant for the game and brilliant for the sport? But does that Put more pressure on West Ham and everyone this week is obviously it's going to become more lucrative and, and rightly so the game's going to grow. So an extra pressure for West Ham to get this right, not only because of where we'll play our football next season, because of what Jack Sullivan and the way West Ham, the ownership will, will look at the women's side if we're in the WSL or if we're not. Well, yeah, I mean, since since West Ham sort of launched the, the women's team, they've always struck me as being, you know, an, an ambitious club. And I think when Oli Harder came, obviously the the, the aim was to, to first um, secure, you know, top flight football for another season. But he was kind of talking about, you know, pushing pushing into to, with those top five, top four teams. Um, but you need to be in the top division to be able to do that. And and obviously the money that, that's coming in, while championship clubs will get some of it, you know, primarily it's going to be those teams in, in the WSL that, that get the chunk of it. And I think um, it's based on, so the teams that finish higher up will will receive more as well. So there is an incentive and there's, there's going to be more coverage probably of, um, of the top flight than there is of the championship. And as well, if you do get relegated, I think Liverpool going down has, has shown it's not easy to come straight back up. It's a, it's a very competitive league with, with more teams turning professional. And sometimes the team that goes down, they've, you know, they're, they're on a down or the next season because of, you know, suffering relegation before. And of course, you may lose players um, who, who want to go and play in the top flight. You know, some of the best, the better players at West Ham will be thinking they, they want to be part of, of, you know, that the WSL next season with, like you say, the, the exciting uh, TV deal that, that we've seen. So I'm going to put you on a spot a little bit here, Catherine. And honestly, do you think West Ham women have, have what it takes to, to stay in the WSL this season? Will they stay up? I think they do. I think they do. Um, it's like I say, it's just it's just about get, getting that win. And I think... It's, this game at the weekend is is going to be key. Um, I still I still have faith in in Martha Thomas. I, I, before the game, Casey Stoney was talking her up. She, I, on, on Saturday, she was just isolated. She had no support. Um, no one really getting close enough to her, and and she looked frustrated. And then 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 she got taken off, which I thought was quite strange. When you need you know you need two goals and you take your main striker off. Um, she just needs to to get one in the back of there. A one 0 win against Streading, and, and suddenly it, it changes like that. Um, I think Bristol are also in a good position to stay up just on, on the on the fact that they've they've got a little bit of momentum and they've got a goal scorer in Ebony Salmon. Um, I think Aston Villa could be could be vulnerable um, just because again of that experience um, in the squad and and that that they perhaps maybe lack. Whereas uh, West Ham have got got that experience in the playing squad, maybe not so much in a, in a managerial sense like like Bristol have, but. Um, there's definitely enough in the West Ham squad to stay up. There's some, some really talented players in there. It's just about getting that first win and and building on it. Yeah, fingers crossed uh, they can get a result against Reading away. Saturday, 3rd of April, 2pm kickoff. Uh, hopefully, Oli Harder's team can, can kickstart uh, a great escape between now and the end of the season. But th- thanks so much, Catherine, for joining us this week. 
Uh, ho- hopefully, we, well, I'm sure we will get you on between now and the end of the season. Hopefully, by then, our, our, then we can actually talk about positive performance and a positive result. <laughs> hopefully, yeah. Hopefully, I feel like since I've come on, I've not brought very much luck. So hopefully, next time we're talking about a win. It's coming. Definitely, it's coming. <laughs> got to keep, got to keep the faith. But 